photograph Every time I do it makes me laugh How did our eyes get so red? The design of the camera has come a long way over the last 100 years with the increase of technology. As the functionality of cameras has increased, so is the amount of controls and functions located on the camera design. This video analyzes the design of six cameras ranging from the early 1900s to current camera designs. The concepts of control compatibility, the biomechanics of the human hand and wrist, and other various ergonomic ideas were evaluated for each design and the elements that made previous camera designs poor were highlighted. Designed in 1918, the number 3A autographic Kodak Jr. is a large format folding bed camera used until production ceased in 1927. The camera is bulky but moderately weighted. It incorporates three fixed scale moving pointer static displays that control the range, shutter speed, and aperture. None of these controls have any sort of label or dimension of coding that helps the user distinguish the purpose of the control. The camera can be folded in on itself to increase compactness. When taking photographs, the camera is adaptable to any orientation, horizontal or vertical. This camera impedes the user from taking mobile pictures. This camera must be used upon a tripod or flat surface, thus decreasing its versatility. Designed in 1939, the Argus C3 was widely used in photography until production ended in 1966. This camera is heavy weighted and durably built. The front face of the camera has three fixed point moving scale controls that incorporate color coding and static design. These consist of a range finder, an aperture, and a shutter speed control. These controls also have moderately high CR ratio values which correlates to its variety of precision settings. The weight of the camera impedes use and could potentially cause fatigue if not mounted to a tripod. This camera provides no proper grip for the user to hold the camera securely. The Sears Tower 120 box camera contains three controls on the right side of the camera, a diaphragm pull switch, a film dial used to wind up the film, and a shutter switch that is pressed to take the picture. The diaphragm and film dial controls are poorly designed as they lacked pointers and scales that provide information to the user on how far the film has been wound up or to what extent light entering the camera has been reduced. The camera's rectangular box shape also creates a difficult grip for the user which, especially for those with smaller hands, and it can also cause dorsiflexion in the left wrist. The awkward grips and ambiguous controls could lead to user uncomfort and possible stress injuries with excessive use, and the controls lack information when adjusting the camera for photography in different light settings. The Kodak EK4 was released in 1976 and made in the USA. This Kodak has two horizontal slides at the front, a rangefinder, and a brightness adjuster. Both controls are operated by horizontal slides and have simple coding. On the side, there is a vertical slide that takes the picture. Below that, there is a foldable crank that is used to eject printout from the internal camera printer. An ergonomic issue with the camera would be how the camera has its settings at the front of the camera. Because of this, the user must turn the camera around in order to see which settings he would like to use. If the camera had the settings in the back, then there would be accessibility for the user to easily change the settings. The camera is not very ergonomic because it causes the user's wrist to not be straight, which leads to the awkward posture. Modern cameras like the Canon Rebel T5 have redefined the photography industry. The addition of an SD card to save pictures has eliminated the need for any type of film. This allows amateur and professional photographers to directly upload onto computers at home. With this innovation, various buttons were added to the back of the camera to aid in storage management and reviewing photos that were taken. Most modern cameras include a knob that changes modes. The knob on the T5 is located on the top of the camera. Different modes are represented through static display symbol coding. The Canon Rebel T5 is relatively light and evenly balanced. The shape of the camera allows for a comfortable grip and allows photographers to use it for an extended amount of time. The Rebel T5's viewfinder, however, is considerably dim. When the user has to look through a dark viewfinder, their eyes take a while to transition. Increasing the brightness of the viewfinder would be a beneficial redesign. Overall, the incorporation of ergonomic design principles in cameras has led to great increase in camera usability for photographers of all skill levels. Designers should continue to consider the ideas of control compatibility and the biomechanics of the wrist and hand to create designs that continue to enhance usability of the camera and user satisfaction.